you respond to that chord, you know, in a conscious way? Is it just part of the ferment of the times? Did other people sort of echo that back to you when you made the film? What was your experience at the time of how people perceived what your vision of the film was? Huh. Madness. Women in madness. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think really, I mean, I read this story by Paul Bowles. I wanted to make a film that was a directly saluted this, it was exactly how I felt when I read this story. And I didn't really think of it in terms of women in madness. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, of course, dreams, madness, hallucinations, consciousness, unconsciousness, I mean, it's something that really interests me as a person. Um, so I, 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 you know, I really, I try to be extremely true to the story, and part of this archivist story is in two weeks I'm going to Lisbon for the 100th anniversary celebration of Paul Bowles' birthday, where they're doing his music and they're centering, they're doing a big focus on this film. Because they said Paul loved this film and it was the closest film they've seen of any work based on Paul Bowles' writing, that it's the closest to his writing and his spirit. So I'm not sure about the women, you know, of that as a general overall. Okay. Um, <laughs> before I open this up to you, which I will in a minute, and those of you who have something to say about the film, or you have a question, or you'd like to make a comment, you can sort of think about them. Um, <clears throat> it certainly was also a part of the period when women uh, directors began to pick up cameras and tell stories. Um, <clears throat> As many, uh, there have been many great documentary filmmakers who are women, um, but there have also been uh, some feature film careers that began them, yours among them. There was Betty Gordon uh, with Variety, and Susan Seidelman with Desperately Seeking Susan, and, yeah, and even Penny Marshall, you know, in, in Hollywood terms. Um, did it feel at the time like it was the beginning of a movement? And do you think that it that it that there are aspects of it that have carried through or not carried through <coughs> in terms of women having the ability to be directors and, and articulate stories like this? Um, I think it's still. I think it's you know. I mean, at that at the time I made this, there were you know maybe eight well-known internationally well-known women directors maybe in the world. You know. Um, so, but I didn't really think of that, I guess because I had a professional mother and I just didn't think of that as being a stopping point. And also, it was sort of interesting when I produced Strange in the Paradise for Jim, and I, would, I went up to, because I was shot on 35, and I went up to the, uh, the camera house where we were getting the camera, and we had, since we were non-union, we had to sneak a 35 millimeter camera out of the, of the, shop, the union shop house that we were in, and, you know, they had never seen a woman producer before, and in a way it was a great advantage, because they were extremely helpful, and I, you know, in many ways I, they were teaching me things and showing me things and uh, about equipment and everything that we needed, but at that time it was very rare to see a woman hands-on producer as well as a director. I mean, we've come a long way, girl, but we still have a long way to go. You know, it's it's still pretty bleak for women. It's still hard for women to get money in, in the arts. It's hard in all the arts, I think. I think a lot of women, painters and sculptors, are not recognized. Well, I'm sure we have more.